G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. Ooh, we've made some good progress and now we should be able to make a whole lot more today since I won't need to be spending any of today collecting ice for breathing. However, I am likely to collect some ice for another job. I was originally saying that I might put some solar panels on this survival pod because its power situation is a little bit dire, with only three hours of power remaining. But an alternative option would be to use the fact that I've got ice nearby and put a hydrogen engine on this just to eke a little bit more life out of this thing until I can get the survival kit transferred over to the base here. And I think that might be the way I'll go with it. At least until I find out that it's horribly inefficient and that I spend more time mining than I do doing anything else. But it'll be interesting to see regardless. One thing I am hoping for though is that this thing, this oxygen tank, will get filled before I start doing that ice mining for the hydrogen because otherwise it's going to put some of the ice into this unless I turn it off. A few of you had a couple of questions about how this system was working, given that on my HUD it says O2 none, and yet I'm still somehow getting air or oxygen from the vent. Well, that's because the thing on the HUD is not granular enough. While it says O2 none, this planet actually contains, I think I said it to be 1% oxygen content for the atmosphere. So. What I'm basically doing is drawing in that little bit of oxygen and concentrating it into this tank. The same is true, although the percentage is higher, for the alien van for the vanilla alien planet. And that's what kind of gave me the idea to do this, and I just wanted to make it a little bit less efficient than the norm. So that's how this system is working, and that's why I'm so happy to have it up and running. Actually, speaking of bottles, can I make new bottles? Can the basic assembler make them? Yes! Okay, cool. Uh, I might make a few bottles and pop them in that oxygen tank so that I've got extra ones in case I do die and I need to grab a bottle so that I have enough oxygen to get to where my body is. Among other safety related reasons. <laughs> One thing I should point out right now is that Thraxus has updated the ore scrap mod. Now, from what we were talking about, it sounds like he always intended the survival kit to be able to process the scrap from the stuff that it can make. And now it can. It could for a little while and then an update broke it and now it's back. So basically anything that the survival kit can make, it can also process the scrap of. So motors, steel plates, you can process that scrap. However, you can't process things like scrap metal or small steel, small steel tube scrap because those are not producible by this survival kit. You'll need a refinery to get rid of them. So that's a very nice little change because otherwise you're going to end up with a whole lot of junk in your inventory like I did. And I think it makes a fair bit of sense. Let's go pop the resources we've got in the assembler up here. And... Uh, another 50. All right, that shouldn't take me too long. Thinking about what I want to do today, one of the things I said last week was that I would like to get more of my stuff onto the main base. But I think there's one thing I really do, which is what I was talking about before, which is get power onto the survival kit grid, because it's going to take a little while before I can move that survival kit. And I will go with the hydrogen engine at first. So I feel like that should be my next task. As soon as I get these bottles, I'm going to collect enough resources that I can build the hydrogen engine. Wait a second. Let me check if I can actually do that. A small grid. Power cell, computer. Yeah, cool. So I'll be able to collect all that and then I will be able to have, even if it's not very effective, I will be able to have power at my survival kit, which is very, very needed and is a safety net that I absolutely want to establish. What I may even do is try and fill up the hydrogen engine with hydrogen and only turn it on once my battery is almost dead. 
So instead of burning it straight away and charging the battery, I'll keep that hydrogen engine fueled up as emergency power. So once I know I have to start using it, I know I need to think about other ways to fuel things up. Oh, I can fit heaps of bottles in here. Cool. Don't really want to carry more than two on my person though, because that's going to get annoying. Alright. Hydrogen engine. Where can I attach you without it being annoying? So you only have small ports. Where do I have a small port? Oh dear. Uh, wait. One large, one large, and then the large is on the other side. Okay, underneath you go. <laughs> we'll dig out underneath this end so that I can get it in there. Rather than having to grind off that vent. I should have thought about this when I placed the vent down and put a conveyor on. So that I had somewhere else to attach things. But, oh well. This will work. Oh, oh. Oh, I did a bad thing. I just unlocked this from the ground. We got a steel plate in here. Okay. Four. Um, maybe if I... Pull out a little bit deeper, and then I'll put a single armor plate underneath there. Oh no, wait, the other one's locked. So I repaired it. Ah, it's fine. I don't need to stress. That wasn't locked before, was it? Or was I just blind as a bat and didn't... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I swear it was unlocked when I freaked out just before. I must have switched. I'm gonna go with that, and when I see in the edit that I was completely wrong... Oh well. Lesson learned. Ish. Uh, do I learn my lesson and put a conveyor on here? I think I should. I think I should. Let's pop a little conveyor in. So we get multiple other connection points and then we'll put the hydrogen engine there. The other thing I could have done here was build a battery onto this grid and get the starting power that the battery has when you first build it. But... As much as I'm always tempted to use that technique, it feels... It feels as though it's against the spirit of this particular series. I'm supposed to be making things more difficult, not using... tricky little game techniques to make stuff work. So... From that point of view, I think I'm going to kind of restrict myself from ever doing that. So... I won't... Wait, are you on? Energy. Oh no, the o Wait. What's going on? Oh, there we go. I just heard the hydrogen engine start. Is it gonna fill if it's off? Hmm. Do I even have any ice left? Yeah, I've got some ice left in there. Doesn't seem like it's going to fill while it's off. That's annoying. I thought that was the case, but I couldn't quite remember. That leaves me with two options. I can either build an additional... Oh, hang on. No. I do have another option. I was going to say, I can either build an additional O2H2 generator so that it produces more... Or it produces enough hydrogen that this hydrogen engine will fill up. Or I can build a hydrogen tank and fill it up. But there is a third option. If I go and collect a little bit of ice and fill a decent amount of the inventory space with it, what I'll get instead of... What I'll be able to do is turn off the charging of the battery. So the power output from the hydrogen engine should be low enough, while still on, that it'll fill with hydrogen, I hope. And then we'll get a bit of a safety net of fuel in there, I think. I think it'll work. I guess we'll find out shortly. It took a lot less time to get that organized than I was expecting. <laughs> I was half expecting that to take all day, but the uh, sun hasn't even risen yet. I can't remember if I mentioned it last time, but I have made the days in this save slightly longer. 
So it's a three hour day night cycle or roughly three hours because you can't enter the value directly as far as I'm aware. And I, I did that just to have something a little bit different, but also so that if I want to build something in daylight, I should have enough daylight to get a number of things done, which will work quite nicely for my time lapses. What we need to do is go control panel and we go to our battery. And instead of auto, we're going to go to discharge. Then we turn our hydrogen engine on. And there we go, it's filling. Because its current output is zero, because the battery is doing all of the power output, we can fill up our little engine. Where's our engine? There it is. In fact, how much ice are we using and will it fill from what I've... Ah! Out of oxygen! Out of oxygen! Start ah, suffocating in a chair! No! Stuck on a wall! Ah, survival kit first. <laughs> oh, cool! So that's something else that's nice. Because I've got the tank there, when I go to fill my suit at the survival kit, I fill up immediately. It doesn't go really slowly like it did last time. Last time when it was having to process the ice to fill me, it was really, really epically slow. But now, that's nice. That's a nice extra little bonus that I hadn't expected. I might have to make things more difficult for myself if this is the way it's gonna go. Although I say that, I do have two assertive NPC mods running and that have been running since the very beginning. So if I manage to build up enough stuff, I will very much be able to trigger the spawn of a base that could send drones after me. And if I do that before I've gotten some guns, I'm in big trouble. So I need to think about weaponry relatively early on, which means Probably looking for cobalt first because I need the grids not for storage but for the turrets. And can the basic assembler make 25 mil ammo? No, it can only make rifle ammo. So I'm going to be making interior turrets at first. I'm going to need a lot of them. How's our engine doing? It is full. All right. Up in the seat. Let's go to control panel. We will turn off our battery. Now how long? Six years? Six years? Seriously? Let's do some drilling and see if that changes dramatically. If that's the case, I am so glad I didn't go for solar panels. So I think I just made myself the most epic of safety nets. Oh. Sort of. I don't have enough power to run both the O2H2 generator and the survival kit. So if I turn that off, we now start processing stuff. It still says five years, but I can't really believe that. Okay. Well, in that case, we can turn the battery back to auto and on, and we'll turn our hydrogen engine. We recharged in three hours. Okay, I feel like something's going goofy with the power situation. I get the impression that that's six years. That six years is a lie. It's, it can't possibly be that. I think... Uh, I don't know. Either way, it seems like, for the moment, I can run everything and I can charge the battery up a bit. So... I know I was talking about emergency power. For now, I think I'll just... Sh should I charge the battery or should I... Yeah, I'm going to need to charge the battery. Because the output from the hydrogen engine isn't enough to run everything, I'm going to need to charge the battery so that if I do need to run everything, I can. We'll do it for now. But we know we can set it up as an emergency power thing anyway, which is good. Uh, how are our food and water supplies looking? A little bit of emergency rations, got plenty of water. So I think I am going to attach this directly to it. Yeah, it'll mean that I'll have to move them together if I want to get these both in to my new base, but I'm suspicious that my new base might end up with full-sized ones. Yeah, how much extra stuff do I need? I need a whole lot of extra iron to get that thing constructed. Still don't have any need for gravel, so goodbye gravel. See you later. Got some more speed out of that one than the last lot. Sounds like my engine stopped running. It 
has. They must have run out of ice. They have. How's my battery looking? One hour? That's worse! Uh oh. Um. Bad. Very bad. I really need to get this refinery up and running so that I don't have to keep doing stuff at this pod. One hour. It said three before! But maybe the survival kit wasn't running when it said three. Oh boy. That's not good. How much more iron do I need? Another 270-ish or something? I think I've collected a decent amount of stone in there. There's, yeah, 12,000 still in there. Right, I'm going to collect ice to uh, make, uh, hopefully make it so that that power situation isn't quite so bad. Oh, I could run to that, couldn't I? Yeah, let's do it. I think I can run to that. There's stuff in the drop pods that is kind of useful. I can't really get another way. Uh, six. Still got a little bit of inventory space. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm tempted. I've been tempted. It's only 800 meters away. I'm going to be careful not to exhaust myself too much. I've got enough power. Hopefully enough oxygen with what I'm carrying. And hopefully it's not the worst terrain in the world. Also give me a little bit of insight into the terrain around here. I have a GPS where I was, what, don't I? I do not. Now let's just make one here for now. I will make one at home when I get back. <laughs> at least that one will lead me to where I can see the tower that's currently there. Now I know I can walk without getting exhausted, but I need to get there quickly. I think there might be foodstuffs on the unknown signals with the daily needs mod, so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to- I'm going to have to walk now. I'm hopeful that I'll be able to collect that from this one. So I think there are some foodstuffs you can't quite get otherwise. Maybe. Like seeds. I don't know. I'm going to discover a lot of things about this mod during this, because I've never really played a session long enough to explore it properly. I just knew I wanted to, so I added it to this series. <laughs> oh no, I just realized something. What if I get there and it's one of the drop pods, the unknown signals that rolls away or flies away from you? I've got no chance of catching one of them. If it is, I've basically just completely wasted my time. I'm not so interested in the components of the unknown signal like I normally would be because I won't get components, I'll get scrap. But I am interested in the possible... or in the chance that I might get a nice tool from it. I can hear it. Close. Come on, please be one that I can actually get. Please don't be one that's going to run away from me. Oh, please. I think... Oh no, is this the hoppy one? Don't be a hoppy one. It's not fair if you're a hoppy one. I don't see an engine. I think I'm okay. Yes. Oh, phew, that would have been so horrible. Leather boots, yay. 25 interior plate, that's not bad. But no tool. All right, I may as well collect the scrap while I'm here. I think the spot where you can grind this stuff is so frustrating. And I think I'm going to have to abandon this anyway because I'm going to run out of energy. So I'm just going to leave those bits there and... Oh, speaking of trash cleaner, I need to turn it off. Trash removal. Suspend. Because I don't want any little bits of my stuff getting deleted. And I have 20 power, so I'm going to turn off my lights. I'm going to turn off my broadcast. I'm going to sprint for a little bit. Because I need to get home. I can't believe that one was close enough that I could actually get it. All the other ones have been a few k's away and I just... Before I got those extra bottles, it was never going to be feasible. I don't think I'm going to go after many of them because it's... It's a lot of hassle for very little reward. I would have probably gotten more 
from just hanging around at home, but I kind of liked the idea while well, hanging around at home and drilling stone. I kind of liked the idea of possibly getting an advanced tool. Energy critical. Although I fear I may have done something very, very bad. I am just going to have to sprint because my power is getting very low very quickly. Eight, seven, six. Oh, geez. I'm just going to take the I'm going to take the pain from the stamina running out, I think. Five. Oh, no. OK, ouch. Four. Ow. Three. Oh, no. Please let me get there. I'm so close. Two. This is going to be bad if I don't get I don't know how quickly the power is going to kill me. Oh. Eh. Let me get to survival kit. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That was close. I had one power left. Uh, <laughs> I definitely ran that one too close. Uh, Ow. I think I need to sit in the chair. Ow. How did my bottles go? Oh, didn't have much bottle left either. I'd gone through half of it. Hmm. Ow. <laughs> this is going to hurt for a little while. Yay! Refinery complete! Well, I mean, shortly. Gotta weld the thing first, but I've got stuff. Just had a moment of panic that I haven't <laughs> aligned the thing properly. <laughs> oh, that would have been all sorts of awful. That would have just been the worst. Yes. They can both run. Just. So what does our basic refinery require? 330 kilowatts. So it... Ooh. How did it even run? I don't have quite enough power for it. Maybe it runs less efficiently or something. That shouldn't have been able to run, I wouldn't have thought. No. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth or something, I guess. Before I do any of the building of those other bits and pieces, what I need to do is build a rotor onto this and build a small grid battery. Because building a large grid battery, that's going to take a lot more material and I only really need a little bit of extra power. So, what I will do... Rotor. And the beauty about this, I don't actually have to build the whole rotor. I just need to place... I just need the single steel plate to get the thing placed. Pop that down there. Grind off that. With build vision, add small head, and rotor lock. And like so. That's going to be a lot cheaper to place. Right, 300 iron. I think I'm going to continue my ice mine hole. I'm going to dig this into the rock. Yeah. Last time I asked you guys to give me some ideas about how you might go about making the basic assembler useful even once you get the other assembler. And the most common idea that was suggested was using the basic assembler to make basic components like steel plate and construction components, that sort of thing, and then making the advanced assembler only capable of making the more advanced parts. Uh, that idea is nice in its simplicity, but there's a problem with it when it comes to building a larger base. And that is ultimately a game performance problem. It's not a gameplay problem because if you're building a very large base, you should be able to fairly quickly build a large array of basic assemblers. But that creates its own troubles. If you build a large array of basic assemblers, you're then having to process all... Well, then your computer is having to process all those basic assemblers and all of them working all of the time. Which isn't ideal. The problem with that is that you end up with the game constantly calculating all those assemblers doing all that work. And that's why I think Keen added the upgrade modules to the refinery and the assembler so that you could have one assembler doing stuff faster, which was going to be less of a performance hit than multiple assemblers doing the same thing. So ideally we wouldn't really want to create a situation where people have to have massive arrays of basic assemblers. Energy so low. for me, 
from that point of view, it's not ideal to try and take away that functionality from the basic, uh, from the advanced assembler, unless you can add some upgrade modules to the basic assembler. And I know I'm not capable of that level of modding, so for me to be able to do that, that's out, but it's something that someone much cleverer than me might be able to pull off. And now that we have battery, we're not going to have the refinery going do, 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 which is a horrible noise. And I'm sure listening to me just do that then was horrible as well. Uh, fully recharged in two hours. Perfect. So that battery will charge up whenever we're not actually working the refinery and be able to provide enough power to everything when we don't. So we should be good. You now. <sighs> Excellent. No more need of the survival kit for processing at all. The other idea which I kind of liked but also runs into the same performance problem was taking some inspiration from games like Factorio or at least the production chains in games like Factorio. So instead of the basic assembler making... Sorry, instead of the advanced assembler making components from ingots, it makes components from components and maybe ingots as well or we increase the number of parts that basic assemblers can make so that you make a bunch of parts which then the advanced assembler turns into more advanced things. Again, you'd need lots and lots of basic assemblers which can, which can cause performance problems. So if we had upgrade modules, that would be a, kind of a really cool way of doing things because you'd then need to set up more complex production chains to get the final components you need, which I think would be interesting and make and make for a genuine use of the basic assembler. So those were kind of the two ideas that stuck out to me and the removing stuff was one I'd been thinking about but didn't do for the performance problem side of things. What am I doing now? Now that I've had all that chat, I have forgotten what I was wanting to do next. And I think, can the basic refinery refine magnesium? Let's check. So if it can, I would really like to, so that I can get some ammunition and put a gun somewhere around here. Alright, before I collect too much and end up with two... Ugh. Really? I was gonna say before I collect too much and end up having to waste some or store some and... Store some? Store some? Pretty sure it can refine magnesium. Yes, it can. Perfect. Alright. So I can refine some magnesium. Let's get that done. So the more I start moving around, the more I'm going to attract attention. And the more I'm going to need to protect myself. Alright, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is focus on getting a little miner. The idea I've got is to make something with wheels, but also to make it with as few wheels as I can possibly get away with. And I believe I should be able to make a functional miner with just two wheels. And not in the motorbike way, more in the rickshaw way. So I'm thinking I might be able to make a mining rickshaw. Something that can tilt the pivot about those two wheels to go up and down if I add a couple of gyroscopes. So that's what I'm going to do. The reason I want a mobile miner instead of a piston based one is that there has not been a single occasion where I've built a piston miner and haven't had to remodel the dang thing. And with all scrap, remodeling when you don't have a means to move something to a new position is not great since I wouldn't be able to detach rotors and move stuff easily because I'd need another crane to be able to do that. And I think you can see the Russian nesting doll thing that I, situation that I would get myself into with that and needing cranes to move cranes to move the mining thing to move. It just gets, it's much better to build a wheeled thing at the moment. And then when I've got more resources where I can afford to remodel stuff and use a little bit and lose a little bit with each remodel, that's when I'll do that sort of thing. I may even make a portable piston based mining setup because I think I'm going to do everything I can to avoid building flying stuff until I've got some very good power generation. 
and obviously very good power generation sticks up in the sky. Enemies tend to be attracted to such things, so I'm also going to need to protect myself. So that's something for the more distant future, I would say. This mining vehicle idea that I've got, the rickshaw style thing, has another advantage in that it should be able to be fairly all terrain if it's just operating on two wheels and using the gyroscopes to keep itself in the correct orientation so that I'd be able to move around as I need to to get over nasty bumps and that sort of thing. And being light, hopefully it won't use too much power. That's another advantage is that two wheels is going to use less power. The challenge I'm going to have with something like this is that I'll still need to power it. I'm going to need to charge it somehow. So I think at first I'm just going to rely on the basic power from the battery. See how long it looks like it's going to last. Because I don't really have a plan of how to get a connector on something like that. And nor do I want to build a large grid connector on this temporary base. That's a lot of resources that I would be throwing away to finish something like that. Those things have a hundred steel plate in them, I think. So a large grid connector. Yeah, 150 steel plate. That's that's not happening. Oh geez. 0216, 14. Yeah, survival kit first. Fill it up. Might as well get my health back while I'm here too. Oh man, that is so much better with the survival kit being able to fill up my oxygen instantly. Much less stressful. Right now, how much power have I got left? Two hours. Okay, that's alright. Because if this mining vehicle works, I should be able to collect some ice much more quickly and then run that engine for a little while. Which will make us just fine and dandy. If I put the rotor here, grind off the rotor part, that small head, and now to get myself a little bit of clearance. I might just, since this is one of the bigger blocks, place a battery like so. And then that is one. Yeah, that's one steel plate wasted for what I'm doing. So, blocks I am going to need for this build. I'm going to need a cockpit, and I will use an actual cockpit. Now, which of these is cheapest? Oh, industrial cockpit needs grids. Eh. I guess we'll go in with the standard cockpit then. So standard cockpit. I need a battery. I need some... Do I go 3 by 3s I think I will. So otherwise it'll be too wide. So 3 by 3 left and right. Then... I think once I build the gyros... Uh, once I build the cockpit, I should be able to get access to gyroscopes. I'm going to want an ore detector. Let's drill in this. Yes. I need a drill. I think if I pipe the drill to the cockpit, I should be able to get away without any cargo, at least initially. Because the cockpit plus the drill should carry enough to make this still worthwhile. I think I have an idea. Uh, if I go with that battery's at the very rear, then we put a single block, which I'll need to place there for the moment. Then we go with cockpit. And then we have a drill which will stick off the front, which I'll have to build after I do the rest of this because it's not going to fit there right now. So we'll go drill off the front. Then underneath, we can go with single block, maybe I think there. I think right in the middle of the cockpit is probably going to be pretty close to the center of mass. Right wheel suspension there. And then the left one, unfortunately, is going to be in the ground. Which is the exact opposite of what I want it! Oh well. Oh wait. Oh no. Oh yes. If I unlock the rotor, it should spin. There we go. Ow! Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Wasn't paying attention! Focusing too much on building! Come on! Get to this final kit! Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Way too focused on that build. <laughs> oh man. This is why I'm going to need a pressurized garage to build everything in. Okay, now I should be able to place down my left sided 3x3 wheel. Yeah. Cool. The 
battery parts. Now I should have gyros. Yes, I do. I'm kind of thinking I have the gyros toward the front here. Just to bring a little bit of extra weight in front of the wheels. As right now it looks really, really badly rear heavy. I imagine without the drill being full, it might be very rear heavy. So my somewhat weak justification for this weird monstrosity is cost. This is cheaper to make than something with four wheels. And I will wholeheartedly admit that that is a weak justification. I, <laughs> I couldn't think of a better one, but I think if this thing works, it'll be kind of cool. And I, after the, I don't know, I think it's necessary for me to do something stupid in, and like this in memory of the Ugly Duckling from my first single player survival series. And I think this thing will actually work. Having full mouse control without having to worry about balancing off four wheels should give me fairly decent mobility underground and ability to grab stuff the way I want to. I, I think this could actually work, assuming I can figure out a way to get a decent connector onto it. Which is why I started thinking that leaving this gap here will be a nice way to manage that. So I'll be able to put a connector potentially on top by piping up to it. I'll also be able to add a hydrogen engine to this if I need to add power before I manage to get that sorted out. Oh, just had a thought of how I want to do things. Or how I think I might do things is probably a better way to say it, because knowing me, I'll change my mind before I actually deploy this solution. So what I think I should be doing right now is collecting enough resources to make a small truck. So a small grid truck that'll carry the survival kit, that'll carry enough resources for me to establish a new base further up in the valley where I've got a nicer view. And once I've got that truck, I'll drive off taking what I can from here and leaving most of it behind more as a turret outpost than anything else. Um, I'll probably just reinforce this tower a little bit over time and build a few things like it so that I can run a few turrets around this valley, meaning that any enemies that might come my way have a better chance of running into something else before they run into my main base. But building a truck would be the best way to do this, I think, because then I can move somewhere further away without having to think about any ferrying by hand. Inventory full. Especially if I manage to make the truck able to latch onto this thing somehow. So I can carry it there. And do it all in one trip. That's totally the way I'm going to do it. So one of the things that made me think about this rickshaw two-wheel design was that part of the most challenging thing with a wheeled miner is being able to adjust pitch accurately to where you want it to be. But having something that can pivot around a single axle effectively the way this will, I should just be able to do that with my mouse. So I'll be able to adjust it really dynamically and hopefully if I've got good enough control I should be able to create fairly good mining paths so that I can get deep underground if I need to for an ore or I can get to remove a boulder like that completely without having to do too much else in the surrounding area. I have dreams. So many dreams for this thing. I really hope it does work like I imagine. Alright. Wheels. Done. One of these, which I will place here. Now I'm not obviously not putting the vent on the front because that's where the drill's going to go. And then we'll go with a vent on the side here. There we go. Depressurize on. Yes, it works. Fortunately, so far I haven't needed to use the rotor trick to get a large small grid cargo connector. Cargo connector. Cargo container hooked up to this thing. Because there's enough storage in that refinery and assembler for me to do what I'm trying to do at the moment. I haven't needed to really worry about it. But that may be something I do if I don't find cobalt soon enough. Since I will need that cobalt for any grids any large grid cargo containers. Just thinking about how much capacity there is in a cockpit and how much capacity there is in a drill. It's only... how much is it? Cockpit's a thousand litres. So that's kind of one hand drill worth. 
and then I think the drill itself will be another two. So it will save me time, but won't save me all that much. However, it will make mining stuff that's a little distance away, like a boulder of iron, a realistic option because I can... Because of the vent on it, I'll be able to keep my oxygen going while I go there and back. Alright, hopefully most of the stuff I need is built. Production? Yes, excellent. Alright, time to detach. Three, two, one. All hell break loose. No. Look at that. So they're slowly tilting backwards, that's fine. I know that's going to happen. It's pretty much, at least in my experience, next to impossible to get the uh, to get vehicles like this perfectly aligned with your gyroscopes. That's not what I want. I want that. But if I've got this relatively balanced, it should be okay. Something that I can constantly adjust with my mouse. All right. We have a drill. How much is the drill? Three, three, seven, five. Okay, so it's like four personal loads. Parking brake off. Oh yeah, she works. Look at this. I'm gonna need a lot more strength on these <laughs> wheels though, because <laughs> the gravity is definitely affecting them. All right, we've got them currently at 6%. Let's go up to 12. Actually, let's go to 15. Oh, maybe 20 for the load as well. That offset is good. All right, park brake off. In fact, I should probably turn steering off as well. Both of the wheels. Because I will mouse steer instead. Oh yeah, look at this thing! This is incredible! It works! It totally works! Now I just gotta see if it works as a drill. Oh man. This is epic. I'm so glad this actually worked. <laughs> I had no idea whether it was that. Whether it was going to be really functional or not. Alright. We need our block tools on the hot bar. Okay. And time to start drilling into this mountain. Yeah. I'm not sure how heavy I can get. I'm going to need to figure that out so that I know what a full load is without having to go into my but into my control panel. I suspect I am full. Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Alright. That does not take long. Also, oh, it's <laughs> it's a bit awkward driving it with the uh, drill full. I may end up scraping the drill across the ground to do this. <laughs> Alright. But it works. Definitely works. Obviously this is not a long-term mining solution, uh, but this is intended as a very cheap to build early mining solution instead of hand mining. Something that's going to be able to produce more without having to be rebuilt than say a piston based setup. Because as mentioned earlier, I do tend to have to remodel those sorts of things quite often when I build them. Oh, look at this go. I'm gonna start like this because once the drill gets full it is very very hard to control this thing oh dear <laughs> i foresee problems here if i keep going for full loads on this very steep hill okay <laughs> oh man i love this stupid thing i love it so much like i've got the three little bits there because i um keep using it as my sparking spot with the drill <laughs> It is possibly the weirdest mining vehicle I've ever built, but under these conditions, it totally works. With this high gravity, so everything, especially the stone, is just going to be a nightmare to move around. I really don't want to be flying, and I didn't want to have to build loads of components. So, this was a nice little basic ship that didn't cost much to build and has definitely upped my productivity dramatically. If for no other reason than now I don't need to run back and forth. But also, I should do one last thing before I finish up for today. 
and watch the sunset. I should grab some ice. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, today I built the goofiest of miners that I've ever built. I've managed to get enough ice to hopefully keep the survival pod ticking over for a while to come. We've got some decent collection of stone going thanks to the goofy miner. And hopefully that means next time we can pop a cargo container on it, pop an ore detector on it, and get out there and see if I can find some more resources, maybe an iron boulder, and maybe even a cobalt boulder, or even some underground would be great. So that I can get some metal grids and I can get a truck, load up the survival kit and everything I want from here, and head on up towards that valley that you can see there. I think, I'm hoping that there'll be a slightly more level area somewhere in that direction so I can still have the view of the gas giant in the distance when I start building my base. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And as always, I'll see you then.